The purpose of that is to make sure that anyone who says, oh, look what they're going to be talking about that night. I want to be there. Or I want to send an email that morning. Or I want to give somebody a call on the board and share my opinion and give my two cents worth. Or I want to come and speak. They can come and speak to that issue. That evening when we get to the agenda and we're talking about that topic, we'll have heard that. Or we'll have received that email. So if someone comes to us with something we're going to be talking about later, we can process it that way. If someone comes to us and brings up a question or issue that we haven't that fit us on the agenda, we certainly can't respond. And so we do listen and we do take it in and we do then respond within a couple of weeks directly to that speaker. But it's a position that does to some seem kind of absurd. We, we could have a speaker tonight who could show up and say, you know, as we all know, two plus two equals five. And I've discovered that you're teaching that two plus two equals four, and you're intentionally doing that so those kids can't get jobs. Well, we may all believe that that's incorrect, that two plus two does not equal five, that we're teaching two plus two equals four because that's the right thing to do. And we may feel that there's no intent that we get the kids get the job. But we listen politely, we say thank you, we respond. And even in that response, if we as a board have never ever considered as a board the question of whether we think two plus two actually mm -hmm. means four or five, we, we, even in the response that, that I or whoever the chair might be responds, we can't really address that because we've not discussed it as a board. And so at that point, some one of us could say, hey Mike, that is an important question. Let's put that on an agenda. So then a month later or so, it might appear, the public will get a chance to see that, oh, that evening we're going to be discussing whether or not two plus two is just four or five. They can come, they can share thoughts with us, we can absorb that and have that debate with us as a board. But that's why we do just sit here. And, but it doesn't mean if someone says two plus two equals five, we all know that. It doesn't mean we agree with it. It also doesn't mean we disagree with it. We as a board have no feeling on it. We have no response to it because we haven't met and discussed it and concluded about it as a board. So it does seem kind of odd, I think, that people could say anything. And we accept it, and we say thank you, and we get back to the individual and we move on. So, just thought that could be helpful for folks to understand who have just started paying attention to what we do this year because of the important issues that have come before us as to why we kind of behave that way during public comment sessions and what the practice and practices are. Okay. okay. With that, we'll move into this evening's community input. And Jeff, I don't have it up. Could you just yes. list the, the first speaker for me? Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, Bruce Ona is our first speaker. And, And also, uh, sir, we are asking speakers to make sure that when they're at the podium to keep their mask on. I know that it's an impediment, but it is policy. And in the past, we haven't really noticed when that hasn't happened, but we have had some, some folks who pointed out to us that we are inconsistent with that. So any speakers tonight, please do leave your masks in proper position while you speak. So thank you. With that, Mr. O'Neill. Hi, neighbors. At the November 23rd school board meeting, the director of equity and innovation stated that the, quote, the impact of teachers of color on students of color is immeasurable. He went on to say, quote, the impacts that staff of color and administrative of color, unquote, I think he meant administrators. He continued, quote, students who see people that look like them in these roles is immeasurable so that this is a part of this particular goal, unquote. So he's saying it's important for students to have staff. So the belief system under the equity program has as its goal to have every skin, color, and culture equally represented and concluded in the classroom and staff that kids excel in learning this way. Let me share with you a deeply embedded culture in Roseville students. This culture contains the following. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Girls' sports teams are for girls, not for those who mistakenly believe they are of a different identity. Sex before marriage spreads dangerous STDs. A unborn baby is a living human being and has great value. Homosexuality is a misuse of the human body that has dangerous health consequences. Girls have the right to privacy in their bathrooms from other sexes. 
Science and Biology and DNA Science and Hard Fought Women's Privacy Rights also affirm this healthier culture. Under equity guidelines, this culture shall expect to be granted at least equal representation by staff and teachers and administrators and insider support groups staffed by teachers like the LGBT, the non-science group has. Um, at the Bloomington Civic Center LGBTQ Pride event, they had three um, drag queens <clears throat> reading to the kids, and all three were porn stars. One of them worships at a satanic temple, and so this is 100% of these are bad influence on our kids. So this brings highly into question the character of LGBT. Thank you, Mr. Governor. Who's that? Alan Wilson. Mr. Hello. All right, hello. Well, I want to thank you very much for getting back to me with my comments from the previous meeting, November 23rd. Now, the issue that I wanted to focus in on specifically was actually two. The first one was the book, How to Be an Anti-Racist by Amber Max Kendi. Now, I don't know if I made the question clear, but I was wondering if this is a book that is being used in the training materials for our staff members. Now. In the email, this board stated to me, quote, that book has generated reviews both praiseful and condemnatory and everywhere in between. Perhaps that in and of itself is a reason to read it and consider it to spur thoughtful debate the concepts proposed. Now, I would just like to repeat for everybody here a quote from the book, How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi, quote, the only remedy to past discrimination is present discrimination, the only remedy for present discrimination is future discrimination. Now, the thing is, is that this is a book that is openly and unabashedly called for discrimination on the basis of race, and Ibram X. Kendi has not made any qualms about it. I would also like to point out that Ibram X. Kendi, the author of this book, has also, among many other things, he has called those who resist COVID lockdowns slaveholders. He has also promoted the idea that the executive branch in our federal government should create a new department that has the unilateral power to strike down any law at the local, state, or federal level that this organization would deem as racist. And this is in addition to many other things that Kendi has stated. So this board also stated, quote, in the email, quote, certainly our teachers and staff collectively possess the intelligence and judgment to use any book or written work as a catalyst for thought and reflection. I would have to say that any teacher or educator that intends to use materials or books from Abram X. Kendi, I would have to seriously call into their judgment because again, this is a book that openly calls for discrimination. So my question to this board is two questions. First, is this book, Abram X. Kendi's How to Be an Anti-Racist, is this included in any of the training materials for our staff members? And my second question is, is any material from Abram X. Kendi going to be used in the training of our staff members? So I would like to have an answer on that. And then my second point, um, and also just one last point, is that basically Ibram X. Kennedy's materials don't encourage debate. They just basically encourage everyone to label those who disagree with them as racist in hopes of shutting them up. So it doesn't really encourage debate. And real quickly, with the terms of the term Latin X, the email, this board said in the email, quote, I'm not sure there is a definite right or wrong that is universally agreed upon even within the Latin X slash Latina slash Latino communities. Recently, I would like to point out to this board that Politico recently did a poll of Hispanics and they found that only 2% of Hispanics used the term Latinx and 40% of those surveyed were offended by the term. So I would just like to reiterate that colonizing the Spanish language is not a very good idea. The proper term is Latino, not Latinx, and the Hispanic population just doesn't really like that. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Our last speaker is Angela Byrne. Again, for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, I just want to speak as a parent of a, of a trans child. I want to talk about the need for privacy in women and femmes' bathrooms. Is that I think an important question to ask us is why we need that privacy, why women had to fight for that. Um, and I just like to point out if cis men are taught by the patriarchy to have entitlement to women, femme, queer, and trans bodies. Uh, and if we actually work on dismantling the patriarchy, we wouldn't be the need to have gender separated bathrooms. We should have age appropriate ones and allow our children to move freely where they feel most comfortable instead of having to have this 
uh, disproportionate and unnecessary fear for them. Uh, with the remainder of my time, I'd like to read a definition of moral panic, definitely apropos of many of the uh, community comments of these meetings of late. It is a mass movement based on the false or exaggerated perception that some cultural behavior or group of people is dangerously deviant and poses a threat to society's values and interests. Moral panics are generally fueled by media coverage of social issues. The, the phenomenon was first described in 1972 in relation to the mods and rockers groups of the 1960s. Since then, moral panics have occurred in relation to the satanic panic of the 1980s, violence in video games in the 1990s, stranger danger from super predators and razor blades and Halloween candy, uh, Islamophobia after 9-11, Dungeons and Dragons in the 1980s, and that even continued into Harry Potter in the 2000s that it was somehow teaching witchcraft and I don't even know what to children. Um, currently, the anti-critical race theory movement is that CRT is a very specific class taught in law school. It is not taught in our schools and it is used uh, against equity and uh, uh, um, diversity education in our schools. Um, and then finally, I'd like to point out that the LGBTQ community continues to be a convenient folk devil from the AIDS epidemic to pedophilia to now some conspiracy that trans people are trying to assault people in the bathroom. Uh, again, I'd like to encourage the board to continue moving forward with any guidance and any different policies to support LGBTQ youth as they are uh, historically and by any measure of any data uh, more likely and more susceptible to abuse and other uh, uh, disparate outcomes uh, for their mental health and other things. So let's continue to make sure that our children are healthy and are experiencing uh, a diversity of cultures and races and experiences to make sure that they don't grow up to have um, uh, disproportionate fears of their peers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. With that, we will slowly turn the consent agenda because I just realized that was remiss and not asking for a volunteer before the meeting to get the meeting. So if anyone is willing to do that, that would then have to call that up on your screen or have it as a printout. When we get that point, I'll ask for a volunteer to read it. Okay, excellent. Thank you. That's a document we'll do just this evening. With that, I would introduce my motion to uh, approve the consent agenda. So so we'll we have no retirements this evening, so with that, uh, Dr. Dodd, would you share with you? Certainly. Uh, the one Rosary Association of Catholic America, 